The math department has, I have to talk to them about their philosophy because they've got, they've got something going there. Okay. Fortune favors the prepared. This is a, I don't know, in chemistry this is a saying. Fortune favors the prepared mind. Uh, Kukuli imagined a snake in a dream and suddenly he knew what benzene looked like. Okay. So you can do slides on the fly. And if you've learned through, the con through this conference, we've seen a little bit of slides on the fly. If I suddenly wanted to ask a question, like I often do, I could just go up there, hit a key, and type it in, and boom. I'm not that fast of a typist, but it's going to really hurt me if I have to do every single slide on the fly. So unlike my old lecture style, bless you, where I could do anything, sort of, hey, I want to change my notes. I want to go to page 78 right now, um, instead of going, bless you, to 72. Then I'm going to have problems, okay? I, I can't be quite as moving around, like, because PowerPoint, unlike overheads, you can't, it's hard to just kind of pick the one off the bottom and deal from the bottom, okay? So you have to be a little bit more prepared. You can't jump around as much. So the more prepared you are, the better. Now, it's becoming easier and easier to just get content, okay? So somebody wants to give you content-oriented slides. Publishers are starting to do it, even if it's not in Turning Point. I'm a good, big Control-C, Control-V works on my computer very nicely for copying and pasting content. I'm not proud. I don't even have to use a Thompson textbook. They're not here, I hope. I don't even have to use a Thompson textbook to use their material in my Prentice Hall class. It's chemistry, okay? So content is getting easier and easier. Um, but if you come in there looking like some totally unprepared schmo that's trying to do this thing with the clickers and you don't have a clue, bless you, you're going to have some issues, right? So you have to at least have put in a little bit of lead time. So I heard some questions yesterday about how much extra time is it. It's really not that much in the preparing my slides thing. It's in the, that first day. You know, that first impression is the first one, right? Come in, I got to know how it works, and it probably won't work exactly how I thought it was going to in my office. And so you got to have a little bit, of, little bit of willingness to fail, okay? And then laughing it off and saying, we're still using this. All right, here we go. So you reap what you sow. You got to invest the time, okay? If I say on day one, clickers are really important, and then I move on and do chemistry for the next 50 minutes, we're going to have some problems. So I really need to get them to spend the time in class to get them to work. I had one student here who couldn't log in at the beginning there. We had somebody helping out. And so I would probably say, hey, you logged in. Can you help out your neighbor with logging in there? It looked like you knew what you were doing. Okay, and there looks like there's some questions. So we have to get that, especially in a class of 500. Okay, you really want to get this thing to work because you want to eliminate all the how do I, this didn't, I don't know if this, though you want to get rid of those. So just some examples. Uh, my syllabus is my contract. It's not really my contract by university policy, but it's the students feel like it's a contract, and so I want to lay it all out there. So on day one, when I'm showing them the syllabus, here, you need a book, you need a lab manual, you need some lab glasses, and you need, this is the old version of the clicker, but you need a clicker. And so then we're going to use these things because right here laid out, I'm telling you that we're going to use these clickers in the syllabus. Okay, right here on page one, attendance will also help you. I don't take attendance in a big class, but I could with the clicker, but I don't. Um, so it's going to help you participate in class. So please bring your clicker as, oh, sorry, response pad. I'll change that. Okay? Bring your response pad to every class. Okay? You are responsible for being sure that it is functioning, and you are responsible for making sure that your batteries are not dead. If the calculator's batteries died, no one seems to think that's the instructor's problem. But when the clicker battery dies, well, the instructor really needs to make sure something's going on. Well, you know, your batteries are dead. Like, did you check that? Like, I, I, it's 350 at the Alamo. Go over there. They're button batteries. I hear I have one in my pocket to show you what it looks like. I mean, so that's not my issue with a calculator. Why is it my issue with, the, with this thing? So I try to sort of, they're adults. They're students, but they're adults. Put the responsibility a little bit on them. And when it's laid out in the syllabus, I get way fewer of the whiny. Okay. So we have these in-class quizzes. Okay. Candy's dander, but clicker is quicker. I can't really bribe my students with candy, but I can bribe them with fun. Okay, I'm going to show them how much fun they've had. So they're all freshmen, often. Um, they've all probably been to a bar, maybe. Maybe not. So they all played bar trivia. So on day one, since I'm trying to get you to buy into using these clickers, which I think are educationally important, I'm going to fool you into learning on day one. And so we're going to do bar trivia on day one. Okay, so I think most of you have seen this screen. Okay, no one, if you haven't seen this screen... That's good for you. You're not getting out much. That's good. Um, I, have, I have two little kids, so I haven't seen this screen in a long time. But it used to be that this was a fairly fun game. And I know NTN got bought out, and I hope they're not here either. But this countdown game is a very common bar game. And most of my students uh, ha have played. Okay? And so they're like, oh, you know, oh, clickers, oh, the, or bar tree, oh, countdown. You know? So the way the game plays, 
it's you use your clicker, except you have this big cumbersome remote control unit because no bar wants you to slip it in your pocket. Okay? And so this is big unit and you basically have five choices and you pick one. So let's play bar trivia. I'm at ISU, so we're gonna have to deal with ISU things. Okay, so nickname for Illinois State. Go ahead, fastest responder is the best. Come on, F9. Alright. So things will go away, hopefully, if I didn't hit the wrong key. Oh, yeah, I hit the wrong key. So they will I I hit nine instead of F9. So we would start to get some clues to get it away, and so the chief, I'm going to have to change that now, too. So everybody thinks we're Illinois, and so we've got these things going away, and so Redbirds, and then a little bit about why we're not called the teachers anymore. And so like, oh, more bar trivia, more bar trivia. And this is, this is in Turning Point. It's just, I mean, I, I'm not good at animating in PowerPoint, but it's easy enough to do. Then we go, all right, Illinois State was founded in... What do you got? And so, it, just like Bar Trivia, you can't really see what's going on. All right. So, we have an 1857 room. And so, in 2007, we turned 150. And so, it doesn't mean anything today, but in a bar, it would say, like, way to go, Rockstar Participant 7, or whatever. And so, you know, uh, this is one of the drawbacks is because I'm doing this on day one and I don't have a participant list that has their names, they don't know who they are. And since it's on auto... It doesn't even give you, like, by the code on the back of your clicker so that you can know, hey, I'm awesome, right? So, uh, way to go, Participant 7. You were the fastest overall responder because I, I you couple both of those points together. And so, pretty good for a non-ISU audience, okay? Because I would expect the ISU audience better know how old we are because 150 is everywhere on campus. And I hope you know the Redbirds. So, this is something that now we think this is fun and cool and it's like bar trivia, and I'm doing bar trivia in chem class. Not bad, okay? So, then... Uh, I guess maybe we shouldn't do Colton quotes these days, but it's the economy, stupid. It's the other Colton. So it's the economy, stupid. So we, oper we operate in the points economy. That's where I live, okay? Students, somebody was saying, oh, students want to learn. And they want, no, they want to get the answers. We heard that last night. They want the answers. Tell, don't ask, they say. We say ask, don't tell. We operate in a points economy. It's all about points, right? How many points is that worth? What's this? What's that? Well, so I have to give you points for playing. I pay you to play. Now, I pay you nothing, but you, like, we also discussed that, like, there's the, we'll give you candy, but if you do a good job, we'll give you the good candy payoff system for student workers, okay? It's a ridiculously small thing, but it works. Um, I don't penalize for not playing. I really, I reward for playing, but it's this complicated, ridiculous formula that it's a pain in the neck to code in Excel. It's a macro, like, once I get the formula in Excel, it's done. But, you know, okay, so we're going to do 100 to 200 clicker questions a semester. Um, the best 80% count, I don't know, I made that up. Okay, and then of that, uh, you get 60% for just hitting any button and 40% for getting the right button. And so what that means is any given question is worth absolutely nothing. So just click, okay? I don't want you thinking about, oh, I don't want to get this wrong. That's not my goal. My goal is not, I, want to get this, I don't want to get this wrong. It's just, just click, okay? So when you're just clicking, and in this best 80% means you can miss a class, and I don't have to worry about, like, giving you an excused absence. Or my clicker didn't work today. That's okay. No worries. Your clicker didn't work today. It's going to be in that 20% that goes away. So don't worry about it, okay? And so if you really want to, give me a slip of paper, and I'll throw it in a file. And then at the end of the semester, if you're within one point of the next grade, I'll look at it. Okay? But then we just don't have to worry about all the 500 people times 1% like problems. Is, you know, you get issues. So this makes all those go away. It's a little bit of a pain to set up Excel to do it, but it's not that hard. So anything's worth nothing. So then the winning is in everything, right? So now we've already established just play, baby, right? So not just win, baby, just play, baby. So am I logged in? I asked that question before every class, okay, just for fun. So the students are logged in. I asked you if you were red, green, colorblind without asking you that. Okay, that's sort of, you came into the room, there was a slide on the screen. If you're doing it on a campus that adopts, that person might have six different channels that they're doing, or five different channels that their clicker's on. So I want to make sure they've gotten on the right channel so that they're getting credit, okay? And they can tell that they're doing it. And so fun examples, I might do the are you colorblind? This one's always fun because if you haven't, you can't play, <laughs> right? I love this one, right? I go in and I'm like, look, 100% say yes. That's because those of you who said no, because we haven't yet found a good way to have everybody give us their clicker numbers. We're working on that. If you said no, you didn't even get to click in. So register your clicker today. It's on WebCT. It's not that hard. Click on the button. Send me an email. Okay. And so this is sort of my fun way to guilt them into playing. 
but uh, because it should be 100% in my class. But here we have some people that can say no because this is on auto. 